Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the sexiest subject in all of game development, garbage collection. Actually, maybe perhaps not the sexiest subject, but it is a very important one, especially if you are a Unity developer. Now, if you come from the world of C++, you have very little problem with this, but if you're working with a managed language such as C Sharp, well, the whole part about being managed is means it's managing the memory for you, but eventually it's going to start running out. And at this point, it has to do something to free up all the memory it's been allocated, and that something is called garbage collection. Basically, this is just like when you start filling up the trash at your house and you need to eventually, you know, push it out to the curb so you can start a new collection. Well, that's exactly what garbage collection is all about. And until now, the way that Unity has done this has been a little bit primitive. Basically, it just kind of halted the press as well. It did garbage collection. And that could have some pretty serious ramifications for performance. Well, in 2019.1 alpha, and depending on when you're watching this, I suppose, Suppose, uh, they enabled the experimental incremental garbage collection, and that's what we're going to look at today. Now, they just did a blog post about this over at um, the Unity blog. Of course, I will link this down below, but they have updated their garbage collection. We're going to look at the details of exactly what that means and how you can go about enabling it and some of the pros and cons of handling this new incremental garbage collection system. So you go on down here, the summary line that you're really kind of interested in, this is their existing system. So they're using the Bohem Demers Y or garbage collection model, which is a stop the world garbage collection, it means that whenever it needs to perform garbage collection, it will stop the running program and only resume execution once it finishes all its work. Now, in a real time game, that can obviously have some ramifications. So, if you start running into memory limitations and you actually need to collect, uh, garbage or you need to like free up memory, your program is going to come to a screeching halt. And we've seen that in Unity applications for sure. Incremental garbage collection, however, looks at things a little bit differently. With incremental garbage collection, uh, they will still be using the Bohem Demers Wiser garbage collection, but we will run it in incremental mode, which means, which allows it to split its work into multiple slices. So instead of having a single long interruption of your program's execution to allow the garbage collector to do its work, you can now have multiple, much shorter interruptions. While this will not make the garbage collection faster overall, it can significantly reduce the problems of dark garbage collection spikes, breaking the smoothness of the animations by distributing the workflow over multiple frames. So for example, if the garbage collection process was going to take um, 10 milliseconds inside of a frame, that could definitely cause a visual hookup. What this might allow you to do is spread the garbage collection process across five frames at two milliseconds per frame, which may not you know, necessarily impact you near as much. So you're not going to see the screeching halt that you're seeing now in garbage collection kicks in. Now, it's not all perfect though. We scroll on down here a little bit more. We're going to get a little bit more detail on how to do things. So you see here, expected results. If you enable incremental garbage collection, uh, garbage collection will split up collection work across multiple operations, which can then distribute across multiple frames, kind of what I was just describing. We hope that as most cases where GC spikes were an issue, this will be mitigated, but there are some catches. Uh, specifically, when incremental garbage collection breaks up its work, the part which it breaks up is the marking phase in which it scans all of the managed objects objects to find which objects they reference to track which objects are still in use. This assumes that most of the references between objects don't change between slices of work. So if it splits the garbage collection across five different frames and then you make a reference change to something that is about to get disposed, you're going to cause issues, which is going to cause it to fall back to the old manner of garbage collection if that happens. So you could actually produce a slower effect here. Now another problem with this is there's actually some overhead as well. So see down here. Also, when using incremental garbage collection, Unity needs to generate additional code known as write barriers to inform the garbage collector whenever a reference has changed. This is that whole rescanning thing that I was just talking about there. So they actually have to put some code in to basically say, this is the bit, this is the bit, this is the bit, and this is the bit that we're going to memory collect. And that has some overhead attached to it. So you could have some performance ramifications for turning this on. So it is not a 100% just improvement across the board. Now, another interesting thing is if you go into this uh this document in general that I will again link down below. They also get into, well, why are you sticking with this kind of memory collector? There are alternatives out there, including one provided by Xamarin. And basically the best of their answer is because this is safest. Um, so there are probably better options out there, but they will also probably cause a lot more breakages. So what they're doing here is they're going with this incremental system. We're hoping to catch the most improvement for the most people with the minimum of impact, which, you know, it, it's, that's a pragmatic decision. I can't really fault them on it. And if you have a game right now that is experiencing garbage collection, incremental, incremental, and incremental, 
uh, incremental garbage collection may actually be a bit of a savior for you. So let's look at exactly how we go about enabling it. Well, there's a couple of steps. First off, you need to have a version of Unity that is 2019.1.0A10 or higher. If you're watching this at some point in the future, whereas that is no longer uh, the case, so you're beyond that point, don't worry, you should be good to go. Now, once you've done that, you load up Unity, you go to Edit, you go to Project Settings, you go to Player, you scroll down within Player until you locate, uh, where did you go? Um, hmm, give me a second. Configuration right there. And then what you want to do is turn on the experiment, use incremental GC experimental. So you just click that button right there and you now have the new garbage collector. Now, if you're sitting there and you're looking at this and going, hey, wait a minute, that's grayed out and I can't touch this. Well, there's a reason behind that. In order to have this option, you need to be running .NET 4.X or equivalent. So you need to update your framework. Coincidentally, I already did this just because that requires you to reset the Unity um, IDE in order to make it so that that's even enabled. So if you're not seeing the ability to actually enable the incremental garbage collector experimental, it's probably because you need to set this guy right here. So make sure that you're using .NET 4.X equivalent um, and then you should be able to enable it right there. And then from that point on, it should just be kind of magically working. But again, there are some trade-offs. If you are changing memory that is about to be collected, you will implement more overhead. You are actually going to make the problem worse. Although that shouldn't generally happen that often, you're going to want to test your game to make sure that that's not the case. And also, this does have some more memory usage because of the overhead for marking things for incremental collection. Um, so you're gonna also wanna really test Test to see how this impacts your game and your game's memory usage. But for, I think, the majority of people, this will just be a win. And I got a feeling that this will be um, a non-experimental option in the future and perhaps just uh, enabled by default going forward. Like I said, it's a pragmatic choice. They could have gone with a straight out just better garbage collector or more performant garbage collector or safer garbage collector, but the amount of impact that it would have on all of the existing code out there, I get why they're taking the baby steps approach to fixing things. So maybe the incremental thing will actually solve garbage collection slowdowns for a lot of people and it'll just be an easy win. Uh, interested to know, are you a Unity developer? And if so, are you running into garbage collection issues? If you are running into garbage collection issues, did incremental garbage collection fix them in any way whatsoever? All right, uh, again, not the sexiest subject you've ever seen, but this is actually one of those things that could have a huge impact on uh, the way a lot of Unity games perform, especially, de well, really depending on how memory constrained they are and how often they are triggering the garbage collector. But this is one of those complaints that a lot of Unity games get is that chronic slowdown when the garbage collector kicks in. And hopefully, you know, by spreading that load across multiple frames, we can also minimize the impact on the games and we'll start seeing those types of titles, those kinds of problems just go away in the future. We can only hope. Anyways, that is it. Again, all the links will be down below. Hopefully you found that useful. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.